Okay. So, uh, good evening, one and all. I am Dr. Kalyani Kusurka from 2021 batch of IHM at Bangalore. I welcome you all to this master stroke event of number 10. To tell you brief about this event, this is a platform wherein we invite our esteemed alumni and we get information about the healthcare sector on a real world ground. So first of all, let's see what the IHMR Institute has been in the past and how the history has taken us so far. Can we move to the next slide? So in 1984, it was the inception year of Institute of Healthcare Management Research. In 2004, uh, the IHMR South Campus, that is Bangalore Campus, was started. In 2010, our Bangalore Campus received AICT approval for PGDM courses, that is Postgraduate Diploma courses. In 2013, the IHMR University was given a university standard. In 2015, we received NABAT accreditation as a consultancy organization for NABH, which was a very big milestone for IHMR Bangalore. In 2017, we introduced a new specialization, which is called as Healthcare Information Technology Management. As you all know, it is a very important, uh, it is a very important branch of healthcare industry today. So that was introduced in 2017. 2018, IHMR Bangalore received MB equivalency by Association of Indian Universities and also received accreditation by National Board of Accreditation. And in 2020, we expanded to the batch of uh, 120 in 2020 and also introduced a pharmaceutical management course. So there are four key verticals of IHMR Bangalore. First, let's see academics. It's a postgraduate program, two-year full-time post-graduation group program, which has four specializations, that is hospital management, health management, health IT, and pharmaceutical management. We have 120 seats, as I said, and excellent placement records. I want to stress here, in 2021, we received 100% placement only in a month. Okay, so uh, next thing is research and publications. So the types of projects that we have are basically evaluation, formative, implementation research, social assessments, etc. And the thrust areas are RMNCH, life courses, NCDs, health communication, digital health, etc. In training, uh, we have uh, management development programs, faculty development programs, also executive development programs. Along with that, we run a lot of certification courses, student engagement programs, webinar series. So it is equipped uh, by uh, in person, you can see, uh, get these programs. These are virtual as well as hybrid. And in consultancy, we have faculty and institutional consultancies, which thrust areas are NABH, quality management, growth and strategy, and project impact assessment. Now let's see the awards and recognition we have received in the past. So we are ranked as the top management college by Higher Education Review magazine in 2017 as well as 2018. We received national award for excellence in education in the category of educational institution with best academic and industry interface by World Education Congress Mumbai in 2020. The week's best B school rank in 11 in 2021 and Outlook's best B rank 10 in Bangalore 2021. We were the best business school in India for 2021 by Knowledge Review magazine. Let's see the accreditations and impanelments. So we are accredited with AICTE, that is All India Council of for Technological Education. Also accreditation with National Board of Accreditation. Then the accredited as the consultancy of organization by uh, consultancy organization for by NABH by the NABT, that is National Accreditation Board for Education and Training. Our program has been awarded MBA equivalency by AIU, that is Association of Indian Universities. And we are also registered with the National Institutional Ranking Framework, that is NIRF. So let's see our empanelment. We are the key resource center for training at Hargal Jal, that is a Jal, Jal Jeevan mission. Then the implementation research for health system strengthening uh, and NHSRC. Then the fa uh, facility assessment of healthcare entities for SHAs under 
the uh, atmanirbhar bharat pmjay that is national health authority and also uh, along with the karnataka evolution authority we are uh, involved in various mnd projects so uh, let's start our master stroke 10o so like i said this is the program wherein we bring our esteemed alumni but why let's let's just talk about why so healthcare market is open globally today it is expanding day by day and we do not know how to enter this field so who better than our own alumni to answer this question so i am profoundly delighted to welcome here dr rajaratan lokhande and dr neetu kumari singh ma'am uh, let's see their introduction first so dr rajaratan lokhande sir uh, he has a wide range of experience from clinical practice to program implementation from grassroots level ngos to state national and international projects he has over 16 years of experiment experience in humanitarian and developmental sector he has developed expertise in program management and monitoring and evaluation including various donors government and consortium partner agencies he has extension field experience working with agencies like aga khan health services award society public health foundation of india and ippf that is international planned parenthood federation in the field of health including mental health sexual reproductive health including hiv and aids with high risk vulnerable groups mobile icdc uh, sti clinics and workplace interventions no more than 7 years he is working with ippf for the humanitarian program spanning across six regions of africa arab world american and caribbean european network with special focus on south east asia and pacific region dr rajaratnam lokhande sir is a medical graduate with a specialization in health management from ihmr bangalore 2005 2007 year batch welcome sir next speech please so our next speaker is dr neetu kumari singh she is the managing director of relsi uh, healthcare management so over 14 year plus experience she has and she is one of the founders of relsi man uh, healthcare management she steers the company projects towards its goals passionate about quality and accreditation planning and healthcare technology she successfully completed nabh assessors course from nabh Six Sigma Green Belt ISO and Lean certifications. She has assisted over hundred plus hospitals for NABH accreditations and certifications, including large and small healthcare organizations. Having expertise in quality and accreditation NABH and JCI for hospitals, human resource management, clinical and non-clinical administration, marketing, strategic alliances. Facility management, quality assurance programs, training and developmental programs. for clinical and non clinical staff she is the alumnus of ihmr bangalore with expertise in hospital management and quality i welcome you both to the session next page please so good evening dr neetu ma'am dr rajaratnam sir and i welcome you both here to this ihmr uh, alumni interaction that is master stroke so let's start our conversation this is a tea time conversation i'm sure everybody is sitting there steaming cup of tea or coffee and having this conversation so uh, let me ask you first how was your experience in this industry let's start with rajaratnam sir so you have completed your mbbs your mph and your uh, from ihmr you have completed your bjdm as well so how was your experience to shift your careers from mbbs to this field and how is the field yeah uh, that was quite interesting in fact uh, i was in daman during the uh, during my uh, the clinical uh, services over there as a resident medical officer and during that time i was trying to pursue uh, post graduation so it started off then the, for the uh, the test uh, i was getting some non clinical uh, aspects uh, for two years and then uh, my one of my colleague he he said like how long you would be trying that oh, so why don't you explore some alternative options and actually during that time also i was uh, uh, trying to explore other avenues um, we had visited couple of universities uh, in and around mumbai 
uh, and we have we were trying to explore this new uh, field uh, called health and hospital management so uh, my brother actually he was doing the net exam so in that we i saw uh, ihmr uh, listed over there and there was a new campus in bangalore so i i felt like that was a good opportunity given that it was a it hub a uh, lot of opportunities in there also and maybe also working with uh, it not only the csr aspect but also the interface between it and the health sector so i found that could be a good opportunity so that's how i i i got uh, uh, inclined towards the bangalore campus of ihmr and applied over there Okay, ma'am. Nitu, ma'am, your take on this. I think everybody has the same kind of journey coming and landing to Bangalore um, campus. I was into my clinics, and I was practicing. Only thing was that my clinic was running very short of administration, so they used to put me and utilize me as a part-time administrator for their clinic. meanwhile uh, since i was into field and practicing i was uh, actually trying to look at the scalability part of my career so i was not satisfied with what i was doing so i wanted to explore um, options i actually looked for um, hospital management in australia i did lot of research and um, the next best uh, field which was like uh, available to me was hospital and healthcare management i was looking into australia and um, yeah ihmr was uh, next best option for me ihmr tests and uh, bits pilani and um, when while my search i was doing my search i came across uh, bangalore campus and uh, i took my call it was a, a quick call coming over to ihmr campus but it was more or less decided because i had done a lot of research on administration about the scalability part so clinical side i was not looking into um, scalable as far as career goes but administration has a lot of things uh, which needs to be which which is like offered to you so i opted and that's how i landed up into ihmr bangalore i cleared my interview so i was here very nice so uh, both of your achievements i had to take a breath between in between while reading all your achievements on and all your certifications so my next question basically it is about the industry uh, so rajaratan sir your industry you have chosen a humanitarian field of public health sector so uh, and you have done so much of work so please tell us about your experience your journey your career etc uh yeah so i'll start with the reason why i selected health uh, basically uh, compared to uh, the hospital side i mean uh, certainly the first year was common for all and uh, that was an opportunity to actually explore also uh, to some extent the other sector health and hospital both uh, to that uh, i i was uh, more inclined towards a challenging uh, sector which i felt like uh health is much uh, challenging compared to hospital it is kind of 9 to 5 except for the emergency uh periods but uh, again it is uh, like if sitting within an ac office um and uh, the 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 hierarchy the career growth is uh, max to the like ceo max you can go but in health i found like okay there is ample of opportunity not only at the working at the state district or national international level even un agencies and all those stuff so that's why i i thought like okay uh, this health sector is uh, comparatively uh, much challenging much to explore uh and uh, given that uh, from my history also you could see that i have i've been sticking to one organization for a quite long time uh certainly the, there are some advantages advantage of you see the loyalty and basically they look into all this but if you see internationally they they just don't care about like uh, how long you stayed in certain organ whether it be 6 months contractual or one year 
after all eight organizations so you have experience of eight systems or something working with different uh, agencies that kind of thing so yeah uh, okay so neetu ma'am your uh, specialization the nabh everybody i think is fascinated about that so please tell us about your hospital industry domain well uh, my journey has been with uh, bangalore specifically after doing my post graduation um i was very confused taking up uh, you know i had two options once i did my hospital administration course either i wanted to or uh, i could opt for uh, quality or i opted for uh, operations uh, i actually spoke to lot of uh, faculty members because i was not able to decide in these two so finally uh, someone told me that quality is upcoming in india quality was not uh, talked about much at that time so it's like you know you uh, you develop so it was like uh, i want you know uh, if i was getting into quality it was like experimenting that time okay nothing was available on ground which could actually tell you that you know where the speed will uh, take you to so basically i thought okay fine let us explore because there was also one thing which actually stuck into my mind that i spoke to some of my faculty members they said the early you enter into some field okay the better expertise you know you grow with that field once that grows so i opted to go into quality i trained myself into quality and yes um, when i became uh, assessor in 2009 i was the youngest assessor in the whole india the assessor number assessor number in whole india was 400 at that time and i was registered as the youngest assessor so from there uh, my journey started because there were a lot of things uh, which uh, had to be explored after that but i did not limit uh, my skills and qualification um, i did my nbh assessorship course i did uh, nearly some 25 lead assessorship course after that also i added on uh, qualification and statistics i am a six sigma black belt yes. not green belt <laughs> Yes. then uh, i did uh, some strategic courses from the university of illinois munich business strategies so i um, explored quality as well as advisory and consultancy both into national and international level so it is like i kept on exploring one field which i had taken up and you know i realized that you know there is no end you begin uh, your journey on to a way but you go on exploring and it branches out so it's it's like you know it's just, you are opening a sky for yourself once you get into a particular field i think this is a message to all of us from both of you that you stick to one field you can explore as many things as you want and if you work hard like you said there will be branches falling out for you okay so uh, my next question actually it is about how ihmr you know help you both to shape your careers uh, let's start with dr rajatan sir um yeah as uh, the, the topics that were covered uh that was quite helpful including uh, the organization behavior and all those uh, uh even during that times we were not computer savvy uh given that we were just medical backgrounds and doing just medical practice and all those stuff so even the it uh, course uh, session did help us now certainly like i i am in fact you know, supporting my my colleagues for uh, small small it things connecting computers and all those or uh, doing little bit r and d and here and there but uh, certainly that aspect uh some some to some ex, uh, extent those field visits uh, we had uh, the faculty uh, nagraj sir he used to take us uh, to his home uh, in his, in his village uh, where we used to spend some, some weeks like two or three weeks uh, exploring those uh, field uh, grassroots level primary health centers and all those stuff uh, national programs at the grassroots level um, uh, visiting or having interaction with the uh, health workers over there so that and also internship uh, working again at with the grassroots ngos so again my take would be like uh, given that uh, they had provided all those uh, initial basic uh, informations not only about the national programs and all those that would certainly help us but uh, apart from that 
the exposure what they gave us uh, the visiting faculties they were excellent in that sense uh, covering each of those topics uh, and and even uh, taking feedback from the students in between like uh, certain aspects were not uh, discussed or not covered example telemedicines or those things so that were also added later on in the second year uh, how we could explore maybe as a side sessions or something like that and uh, and again uh, those uh, uh, the alumni were visiting alumni uh, that was again uh, some uh, complimentary i would say uh, which would which would give and even this uh, this the current webinar series of webinars what you are holding uh, that gave us to some extent a bit of confidence into uh, the sector what we have selected or the field where would we would like to take interest or move further on okay i think i agree to you uh, because even the webinar series that are going on now the guest lectures they are helping us a lot uh, so neetu ma'am your take i think dr raj ratan already covered most of the aspect of ihmr which is like a um, key factor why why ihmr students are different from others i would like to emphasize certain things very very practical approach very very practical approach which which has actually helped me also i would say that three four things for me which worked out really well is that uh, that uh, we were actually sent to the hospitals and um, uh, our faculty members used to call them and used to tell them that in case if you want free resources working inside the hospital kindly use our students okay so we used to work on certain problem statements inside the hospital and one thing which i love about ihmr was that we were made to mandatorily present in front of the ceos oh. yes we were mandatorily made to present in front of ceo so we had to very very precise in our data our uh, our uh, solutions which were given to the hospitals so these field visits were like awesome because um, if you are working on certain pro problems it's like hands on you are not doing a project for a project sake correct so whatever solution which we used to be giving the hospital used to save cost on the resources of actually hiring brains from mhh and whatever projects we used to uh, uh, take up inside the hospital we were helped by the faculty members so ours was like very very hands on approach second thing too many presentations inside the class So mostly it was like the faculty members were not presenting you were presenting you were thrown with the questions a lot of practical exposure actually gave me uh, personally i would say that you know it gave me a lot of confidence presenting in front of the senior members because that was one challenge uh, which i did not face in the industry on field once you know you go uh, you have to talk new deals you have to talk with the hospital owner so that kind of hesitation was actually not there so uh, that helped a lot that was like interpersonal skills your leadership skills plus you were talking a lot of sense to industry people lot of sense reason being if you are presenting to a ceo at a fresher level definitely you need to be you know maybe three times more prepared than what you would be usually so that is how it has actually contributed towards me so that that i will uh, definitely give credits to ihmr plus one more additional factor the faculty members uh, visiting to our campus they were pioneers in their field mm. means i uh, otherwise would have never been able to you know get an exposure with them or even an interaction with them so whatever queries we had we uh, we used to get it you know uh, solved uh, talking one to them in the, uh, one to one uh, uh, with them in the class so we i i think i have been exposed to you know some of the best people in the healthcare industry and in fact that was like since uh, we started with that kind of exposure i uh, the field which i chose i got to work with the best of the institutions as well i worked uh, uh, primarily for 5 years in south india so i was uh, like cmc valor triple m uh, chennai ganga hospital coimbatore so that was the exposure which actually got me access into the best of the institutions as well very true ma'am uh, even i feel the same even talking to you i am feeling very obliged and privileged that i am in touch with the alumni that are you know touching the skies and uh, have achieved so much 
so my next question is about your profiles again so dr rajaratan sir my next question is to you that there are a lot of participants here and i am sure they are going to ask that if we want to choose public health as a domain where should we start and how is the industry right now how will you know the indian industry will cater our needs right now um for the students i would give a broader suggestions that just don't uh, be of course certain things you have to be very little bit selective where in example i was quite clear that i won't be joining any government agencies like that was my priorities uh, because of my past experiences in working in the government setup but uh, yeah you should be quite open for any kind of uh, positions currently to start with uh i started off with the uh, aga khan health service but again that was a uh, headquarters office but uh, yeah given though i am i was a officer i was not saying no to anything and everything so you you need to be very clear on those and how you want to take up those experiences expertise slowly you build on it it is not like yes yeah, something academic is been taught in the ihmr or any in, in institution or any courses but what practically what you experience in the field is something different there you are exposed to a lot of politics and all those stuff so you have to be careful uh, with your line managers and all those uh, again uh, because i am giving you will start off with some indian experiences um, i would not say like anyone would go ahead with internship in some uh, uh, outside india or something but uh, here again those uh, hierarchy does matters in the south asia region whereas in other other regions it doesn't like you can directly talk to your bosses or go even go higher up uh, and there is a quick uh, change over in your positions based on your expertise but here you have to be patient so uh, slowly build on your experience and expertise and slowly move in your career don't try to jump quickly like uh, don't be in a haste or quickly i want to be a ceo or a director or deputy director immediately within like 3 years or 5 years take your time okay uh, neetu ma'am similar question to you that if i am choosing hospital as an industry how should i go about it what is the better career option right now like you said in your times quality was the was something that uh, nobody was opting for so something about the same uh see there there are some known fields in the hospital industry right you have enumerated many if you talk about hospital sector we have got operations quality healthcare it okay these these are the most common field people offer in business administration but uh, if you um if you talk about operations there are other branches you can actually explore for that means the hospital comes up with uh, you know many units when there is expansion so you can learn lot of uh, financial management of the institutions where uh, after operations you can actually go into advisory or consultancy so basically one line is the job sector which you can actually choose from and uh, yes uh, as already i think discussed before that you can go up to a level of ceo but beyond ceo if you want to see there there are other options actually available in the hospitals also multiple uh, units are coming lot of people are uh, if you are very good in operations management even government is opening options for uh, you know uh, outsourcing multiple clinics there is ppp model which government is uh, opening up so uh, in case if you develop your expertise in that then you can handle operations management of multiple units if you are very good at that and then supply chain is also one of the divisions but only limited to the bigger center and institutions where uh, people can offer supply chain is also much in a demand specifically in uh, international uh, arena and sphere healthcare it coming up in a very very big way because uh, the hospitals uh, pharmaceutical centers and uh, medical colleges they are all uh, you know uh, requiring it space so it space is actually they are looking for lot of candidates in healthcare it you talk about quality quality again has two options either you work as a job perspective inside the hospital or you can go into advisory advisory has got uh, you know plethora of options advisory advisory has uh, uh, it's like you need to find a gap in the industry make yourself skilled at that 
and then you go out and offer uh, advisory services both national and international markets are actually open for advisory i am doing advisory nationally and internationally both so quality was one with i started with and i have actually started doing lot of uh, you know uh, process implementation advisory services plan and designing of the hospital apart from the quality lean uh, processes of the hospital which i have started as uh, uh, advisory so these are some of the spheres which you know we have also looked into one uh, field which is like coming up is like business strategies for the hospital so these are all these are all into the advisory services and yes market is open and there is gap in lot of advisory services people are actually looking for skills so you need to be finding but yes uh, i would say that do not stop at one uh, masters of administration you know mba programs you need to upgrade your skills you know eventually and there are a lot of skills available on uh, national and international platforms both in order to upgrade yourself yes very true uh, i want to to uh, to the academics please put it in the chat box so that i can ask it to them uh so let's move to the little uh, light question now uh, your top 3 memories or you know funny memories of ihmr when you were during the college days uh let's start with rajatan sir um uh memories uh, some of the cultural activities we used to do uh again i remember those field visits we did uh to the remote locations for programs exposure uh, that was something uh, nice um ihmr <coughs> yeah that during that time we were struggling a lot uh, with this uh, because it was just a second batch uh, with the accreditations and all those stuff but uh, we were quite uh, the, the whole team was quite committed uh, though there was some uh, issues interpersonal because of the 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 placement and all those uh, related little bit tension but we were enjoying that kind of stuff uh within the hostels and all those so yeah the hostel life uh, something the cultural events at the ihmr and those field visits that's are quite memorizing on i think hostel memories are beautiful to everybody doesn't matter which location it is very beautiful anitu uh, ma'am i will just state one incident in ihmr which was like very funny even if i remember it now uh, i laugh my heart out we actually organized one mdp program and it was just announced in our batch that we are going to uh, you know organize this mdp and the funniest part was that uh, we were given the marketing part of that mdp so uh, we loitered around all over bangalore to find clients going to the hospital selling was like you know we were selling it for the first time so you know we were made to actually sell it so oh. that was awesome you know we were not getting any appointments and the fresher people were actually asked to sell that program so that is one funny memory the second funny memory is that somehow some faculty members actually uh, you know were able to attract uh, a dubai hospital okay more than okay so we had uh, five dubai delegates for that mdp program <laughs> only <laughs> only that later on we realized their hmi system was way far superior than what we were teaching them so that was that was amazing so we were actually thinking that you know uh, they should be making a presentation or we should be teaching them but ultimately it was like that in that mdp program uh, they said that you know they are learning the rudimentary and the basic ways to how their hmis is actually working oh so, <laughs> so basically uh, you know in order to cover that uh, uh, uh we made a gang we we did not want to tarnish the image of our institution so we decided we will take them for shopping <laughs> oh <laughs> so people yes. like people were like really very happy with the uh, you know shopping plannings which we did for them 
so you know somehow we wanted uh, you know people to go satisfied and then you know come back for our mdp programs we wanted to make it successful even though it had blasted on our face <laughs> so that was one really really memory, uh, funny memory of ihmr which i still retain but yes <laughs> the best part was that we were the sales people for that mdp program so that was amazing actually Yes, yes, ma'am. We are into it. It's it's really a nice story. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Neetu, ma'am, just now you mentioned about the courses that we can go for. Uh, can you uh, briefly tell what are the courses that you are talking about? See, uh, first thing is that lot of hospital, uh, you know, financial statistics. Once we come out of MHAs, we do not have knowledge of that. as uh, dr uh, rajratan said that you know what we learn in the institution and what we do on ground is very very different once you know you are into the hospital how a department runs how you develop a budget sheet you do not know what is a budget yes by the time you come okay if a institution is running you don't know what is a financial ratio you know even though we consider we are a mhas but if you ask it yes i learned it in theory but what is actually a bit i did not know what is a healthy financial ratio i did not know how to you know address a institution in that manner i really did not know so you know you need to be upgrading yourself into these programs then there is strategy you know we learn marketing you know five quarter forces once you are doing administration but how it works you do not know there is a hell lot of a deep excel sheet you know once you are making a presentation it's like you know if your management is asking whether my this business idea is going to work or not you let me know that is a consultant profile actually so you do a lot of market feasibility if you go in market you do not know what market feasibility how you are going to present it on you know on a, a practical grounds so you know five quarter forces are there how you are positioning yourself how you are attracting customers or how your customer satisfaction where is your business failing these are some of the pinching issues uh, in the hospital industry if you are able to answer these queries and questions you are a star performer whether you are in our operations or uh, you are into advisory you rock simply rock that means you know you will be like you are a hot cake you will be taken up and in fact uh, it's like uh, you will be you know most desired person one uh, one more thing interesting part i want to add is lot of people run from sales and marketing yes that it is you know really really uh, tough doing sales and marketing for the hospital but let me tell you there is no dearth of scalability in uh, uh, sales and marketing you can go leaps and bounds because the person who is bringing the business on table is the most important person correct so maybe the starting journey is very very struggling but if you learn to sell you are a performer whether it is it is like you know and i would say that if somebody is planning to do a entrepreneurship here in the batch or maybe coming with the advisory services or consultancy yes i also learned sales and marketing and in fact i was the first one you know once there was a stream sales and marketing whether i would like to go i was the first one to run away from that <laughs> okay so that is one special mention actually the sales and marketing is one skill which people should know really should know because your customer experiences you know bringing in customer retaining customers finding out uh, you know why businesses are failing are some top most skills which you need to learn very true ma'am very true uh and uh, rajatan sir my question to you is uh, now that india is expanding its public health with the ndhm the digital healthcare infrastructure so what are the skills that we should have as a public health specialist or through this course uh, that you would suggest uh yeah i i just wanted to like uh, again not be very very specific uh, like each each individual has their own priorities or their own focuses so i would prefer to give them a a, a resource a kind of websites and all those stuff where they they can pick and choose they can filter it out their own uh, topics of interest uh, 
way back my my line manager also some sometimes commented like uh, you are a self motivated person for building your own capacities so i was actually uh, looking out for any kind of courses online offline i had undergone a lot of trainings uh, certainly sir some are short, uh, during job uh, there are short term courses which are available uh which you can get sponsorship from your own organizations or get self sponsored depending on the availability and then uh uh online there are lot 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 of courses like there is no no limits for that uh most of you have must have heard about edx or coursera yes. but uh, i will share some other links also uh, specifically sure. for from my sector humanitarian uh but again it is not limited to humanitarian sector uh so uh what i would say is that you have to be self motivated you have to identify your own interests topics of interest or which areas you like to explore and in that you can do little bit r and d yes uh so the, like uh, cmc vellore uh, had some statistics courses uh which are like uh, maybe one week course that i used to do be before uh, uh ihmr joining ihmr uh iips also i did uh, i think two or three weeks course short term courses so similarly all there are there are uh, other agencies which are even uh, phfi they do some short term courses on specific topics uh for certificate courses and all those stuff and again if you have additional resources or some sponsorship from your organization you can certainly go ahead with those so i'll just put it on the chat uh, some of the website links uh, which sure, sir, sure. you can That's explore okay. yeah yes uh, so uh, there is a question from prana uh, so his question is what things should be add on or what things to do which helps before starting the classes at ihmr which helps during career and interviews and placements uh so anybody of anyone of you can take this question i think you have answered most of it but still before the classes have started ihmr classes first year classes what all courses you should do neetu ma'am before classes you want to ask uh, that courses you should do see i'll tell you something that you know uh, if somebody is coming to hire you they know that you are fresher so even if you are doing some courses actually if somebody is hiring you they want someone who knows a hands on experience yes. right so you can chill because you will uh, gradually explore your personalities uh, you know uh, uh, with your own journey because every individual is a different you know you will start uh, discovering yourself once you are on job what do you like what you don't like you know where your uh, you know area of expertise is there in fact i would uh, be really honest with you that after working one year into some institutions you know what exactly you don't want to do and that's more important question than what you want to do so first realize what you don't want to do and then you go into the sphere that you know in order to do what you want what all you should opt for i think prano you got the answer and i would suggest you the same that uh, don't run behind any courses you can come here and learn as much as you want and then you can figure out uh, so dr rajaratnam sir my uh, question to you is most of us uh, we always have this question in our mind that uh, we are doctors i am a dentist so i have worked in a hospital industry but we don't have any knowledge about the public health sector so how do we know that we have interest in that field and we should choose that field yeah for me it was that was spontaneous uh, that was an uh, interesting alternative as i've said like uh, i was uh, uh, i had appeared twice uh, for the post graduation entrance exams and i was getting a non clinical aspect uh, mm -hmm. though it was you might be thinking it was good options like anesthesia and pathology but okay. my my personal i i was not interested in that in during that those periods uh and then i came across this uh, health and hospital uh, management uh but apart from that uh, over this period of time we have come across new areas 
uh, I have been guiding some of uh, the youngsters, youths uh, about like, uh, don't look into like the grade doesn't matter uh, in the whole life. So just give your best during any of the exams or courses. And uh, you have to follow your own instinct. So uh, like example, artificial intelligence, uh, data management, uh, these are like uh, fresh new uh, areas which anyone can explore. And there is a huge, huge lot of uh, like uh, demand for these sectors. Correct. And I, I would uh, also try to uh, like promote the uh, humanitarian aspect. Like I, I, would, I would not expect anyone to directly pitch in into the humanitarian because it is little uh, like insecure environment and all those stuff maybe start off with some development sector field, uh, working with the local NGOs at the grassroots level or even at the state level and then slowly moving at the national level and then exploring other humanitarian organizations or agencies because once you get a broad understanding about the health sector, so then you start uh, like getting specialization. Okay, let's uh, in a insecure environment or in a disaster settings, humanitarian aspect, how differently you will be working with the same community, maybe with the same agenda like HIV or something, sexual reproductive health. But uh, yeah, it, it would be a challenging. So slowly and steadily try to explore. And you might not feel uncomfortable Maybe you you uh, you just went on applying, applying, and you got selected by Oxfam International for Afghanistan. Now you are not comfortable working in Afghanistan because of this current situation. So you might not opt for that. So just slowly uh, build your build upon your career and your interest and the care. Okay, sir, that answers my question. Uh, so Neetu, ma'am, my question to you is about the NABH accreditations. Uh, so. Ma'am, we have read about it on in the internet, but we, I have personally not spoken to anybody who has been an assessor in NABH. So how do we start this career process? For, uh, for uh, NABH? Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, start with internal counselor training programs with okay. NABH. Okay, that gives you a fair idea of, you know, what standards are. Then uh, I would suggest that you start working under uh, some mentor who is very good in quality because uh, quality is a lot about knowing the entire hospital policy processes really, really well. Second part of quality is you need to know the data analysis part means every process is described into data. Okay. And so data analysis part should be really, really good. And the third thing is that, uh, that you need to be coming up with a lot of solutions. So once uh, you have represented a process in the form of data, you finally analyze it and give solutions okay. on the basis of that. And you implement that solution uh, in that particular process and you bring out improvements. So ultimately the objective of the entire quality is that you are improving the processes. Say, for example, if a hospital has 800 processes, so you have 800 processes to actually work upon. So mm -hmm. how that process is performing, you know, you start collecting data, then you have the entire process maps, which we create inside the hospital, where the problem lies, identify it, and then, you know, section it out and, you know, rule out the problem and then uh, implement it by the way of trainings, by the way of, you know, uh, some policy decisions with the involvement of management. So the quality is actually a job of, in case, if you are very, very experienced, then uh, it's a job uh, in the first rung of the organogram. Yes. So it's like you are coordinating with the entire, uh, you know, System. team inside yes. the hospital. Yes. So uh, it's, it's a very, very, I would say that um, it's a good profile, very good profile. Provided you are, uh, you know, experienced enough to carry out and you understand quality. And gradually, I would say that the top level of quality is that uh, you start designing the indicators on your own. Right. How you are going to assess uh, the processes. Yes. So depending on some system problem or, you know, you take an example of any one hospital, you start designing your own indicator and indexes. 
then how you are going to measure the problem so that is you know uh, i would say that that journey is like 10 years yes <laughs> so it's like i just you start with the internal counseling training program that means make yourself aware with the uh, standards then you start working one i think uh, you are able to handle one complete project on your own after 3 years okay. and post 3 years yeah i'm 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 telling you right timelines which i have seen because it is like uh, i'm i'm running a organization so that is uh, the uh, parameters which we use you know Right. where we need to be putting people who are uh, freshers you know what roles to be given to them and then you know who will become a consultant so for me it's like you know after 6 or 7 years you can um, you know you will be able to call yourself a consultant okay. and then that is the technical skill which i'm talking about like 6 to 7 years after 6 to 7 years it's like you know you add on your skill for you know uh, business lead conversions so there are there is a different set of skills from 7 years onwards which you require in order to become a advisory position where you know the uh, dr rajaratan said no conflict management politics yes. management saving your bag so you come into that arena once you you know cross that 6 years gap so okay. you need to learn a different set of skills you know in order to reach so by 10 years you are like full time consultant you can go into advisory got it it's not a quick fix we have to literally work our way pave our way through the process see, see that <laughs> is that is one thing which is you know unwritten rule we yes. we all feel like you know after coming from mh that we are all eligible to become ceo but it is <laughs> not <laughs> there is a still yes, yes. a lot of journey which you need to take up and in fact there is a lot of personality development you need to be going in lot correct. of personality development correct correct so uh, again to the participants if you have any questions this is the right time to ask and uh, please go through the links that rajratan sir has already shared okay uh, so now again uh, back to the question uh, what are the three takeaways from ihmr bangalore and what is the advice to the current and you know upcoming students of ihmr what we can bring out the best from us rajratan sir uh the the most vital things i felt like uh, the modular approach uh, that was quite quite helpful for us uh, in terms of like little bit flexibility i do understand uh, the uh, the uh, from the academic point of view why we don't label it as masters degree because we want to be little flexible about uh, the curriculum and all those stuff so that actually i would say a plus point and uh, and getting that exposures uh, including those internships and presentations uh, having a, a competitive environment within the uh, the batches so that that also is quite uh, crucial for interpersonal uh, development i would say and getting that future exposure experience of that future exposure within within the uh, the course um what advice <laughs> i am i am not an elderly but uh, yeah I, i think i mentioned that uh, previously also that grade doesn't uh, measure intelligence and so the age doesn't define maturity <laughs> and uh, there is a, a rumi poet from uh, uh, persian uh, persian so uh, he mentioned that uh, yesterday i was clever so i wanted to change the world but uh, today i am wise so i am changing myself so that's uh, the way you have to take thank you very much sir neetu ma'am i i do i would like to advise people uh, uh, you know who are coming as freshers reason being is um, i am also a recruiter right now yes so i uh, recruit lot of freshers and you know i am facing a, a bit of challenges with you know hiring people specifically from ihmr yes see technically you guys are really sound i would i do not deny that because i am also alumni of ihmr i also came out with that but i think that initially uh, uh, it should be like you know people should focus on the quality of work which they are going to learn because ultimately after doing uh, you know masters uh, you know your courses 
you uh, are still not uh, you know full fledged ready to handle the problems on ground so i would say that once you are picking up jobs for yourself do look into the quality of the work which you are uh, you know going to get and yes uh, don't be you know very quick in changing jobs because mm. the stability part you know the, the freshers uh, want a very very high remuneration for that you know they are changing their jobs very very frequently this is a trend which you know we are seeing uh, you know very common right now so only two advices i would like to say that that keep your approach uh, a learning approach because you will be reaching that level where you can put your terms into the industry right so you know just after the college i would uh, just say that that you know uh, keep your terms aside you know keep a approach which is like learning approach be a little stable okay and learn more about yourself once you know you go out and explore reason being is you are developing your own personality once right. you know you are working so you come across those things only when uh, you know you come across people who are expert of that field or who are more experienced into that field so you know uh, evolve uh, gradually that's Just it so ma'am yeah yes so this is a great advice to everybody that first develop yourself keep a steady job and you will get there yeah yes. yeah sure yes yep uh, professionally so, also like uh, like you can have your like mentorship you can shadow somebody uh, within your own organization or outside uh maybe your alumni or, or the uh, the past present people so all these aspects you should be understanding or maybe you might have covered during the capacity building sessions on uh, yeah. uh, yes sir our faculty they always keep on telling us how linkedin is important how you should you know keep a track and keep a you know profile searching and job description and writing all those things and build yourself accordingly so i'm sure you both will be getting a lot of requests on linkedin as well from all of our uh, students and the people who have attended the session today so it was very lovely interacting with you so i would like to really extend my gratitude towards both of you for you know contributing such a valuable time of yours and uh, many thanks to ihmr also for organizing this event and to all the participants who have who are present here i'm sharing a link of the form this is a feedback form uh, you can go and fill this form and uh, i think you will somebody has asked about the certificate so you will get certification after this so i think we have come to the end thank you very much dr neetu ma'am dr rajnath sir and thank you. Uh, i think we should let in the session here now thank you so much yeah thank you thank so much. You. thank yeah. you take care bye mere khana kab